If you're looking for some DIY inspiration using craft wood cutouts, you're in the right place. Hi there, welcome to the Schwelven's Nest. My name is Sandra and I'm so glad you're here. This is a craft kit that's available on my Etsy shop. And when you get one of my craft kits, the first thing you need to do is take a baby wipe or a wet cloth and just wipe off some of the char that's around the edges. These wood pieces are all cut with a 10 watt laser and that does leave some burn marks. If you want to be painting these edges, I would suggest sealing them first with a really thick coat of Mod Podge. For this kit, you get the three oval pieces, the wooden cross, and then you get this word faith cutout. This is a little bit of a smaller piece of wood, so there is no need to do any wiping of the char on this one. I'm taking some antiquing wax and I'm going to go over all of the letters and then very gently just wipe them down. This is the inspiration piece that I found on the Wayfair website. Now it's a wooden cross and it has the words faith in a metal, but I don't have metal. So I went ahead and just cut it out using my laser cutter. This whole kit is available on my Etsy shop right now. So if you want to have some decor that is a little spiritual for the season, then now's the time to grab this kit. Before I do anything to the bases of this piece, I want to glue them all together. So I'm starting with the largest piece at the bottom and then I'll go ahead and glue on the medium sized piece, trying real hard to get it as centered as possible. And then I'll add the smaller one. Then I'm going to go ahead and add some antiquing wax to these pieces as well. But I'm going to leave a little space on the very top one where I'll be able to glue the cross on. It's always better to glue wood to wood rather than wood to paint or wood to stain. You'll just get a much better hold. I decided to use some of this clear gel tacky glue. This is from Aileen's and I picked it up at Walmart. What I'm going to do is just go all the way around the word faith and then just glue it right on top of the cross, making sure that the two long pieces of the F are on the cross bars of the cross, if that makes sense. Once that glue has dried, I'll use my hot glue again and put a decent amount on the bottom of the cross and then I'll glue it right in the bare wood spot right on the ovals. Hold it in place until the glue sets up completely so it doesn't tip over. Once the hot glue had set up, I used the antiquing wax just to cover up any of the bare wood. And now I'm going to add a few lavender leaves and I took some of the lavender blossoms and just cut them down into smaller pieces. I'm just going to attach them just to the one side of the cross base. I love how this piece turned out. I think it's perfect for the spiritual season of Easter, but it's also beautiful to have out year round. Here's a quick look at some of the craft kits I have available up on my Etsy shop. I'm adding new ones all the time, so make sure that you check back regularly at least once a week because there'll always be something new and fun and unique. This next kit is a beautiful bunny. It's actually two layers of everything. So this is the bottom layer. And what I'm going to do is just paint the outside edges with this sage green color. But I think I actually ended up painting everything. But anyhow, it doesn't matter. You're only going to be able to see about a quarter of an inch around the edges. So there's no need to paint the whole thing. The second bunny is a little bit smaller than the first and I'm going to take this really fun contact paper that I picked up at a dollar store. I'm going to fold down the paper backing a couple of inches and then place it on the bottom part of the rabbit and then very gently just pull out that backing paper and smooth it as I apply it. If you've worked with contact paper before, you know you just have to go very slowly and just take your time to make sure you don't get any bubbles. Smooth it along as you go. 
I'll use my craft knife just to get rid of some of the excess paper. And then I'm going to just use an emery board to file off the rest of it, give it a bit of a rustic look. With this craft kit, you get double of everything. So I've got some smaller versions of carrots and then I've got an outline version of them. And for these outlines, I'm going to actually paint them the same color as I painted the first rabbit because you're gonna be seeing just a little bit around the edges. Then I'm going to take some of my favorite honey brown color which is sort of a burnt orange i'm going to paint that on the smaller carrots and then use a nice hunter green for the greenery on the carrots themselves the next pieces that come with this craft kit are two egg shapes they'll fit on top of each other with a little bit of the bottom one peeking out i'm painting the bottom part of this egg sort of a corally pink color. I didn't want anything too bright. And then I'm going to do the top part of the little double heart that you see here. The one thing I love about offering these craft kits is that you can paint them any colors you want. You can take inspiration from how I'm painting them, but if you have your own ideas, then feel free to do whatever you want. The other fun thing about this craft kit is you actually get two of everything. So if you wanted to split this up and make two bunnies out of it with different carrots and eggs and hearts for each, you can definitely go ahead and do that. However, if you want to do the bunny kit the way I designed it, this is how I put it all together. I just put some hot glue on the bunny that had the contact paper on it, and then I'll place it in the center of the green bunny. And that just gives me a beautiful little double layered look with a little bit of that green on the outside to frame it. And I think it's so pretty. I did the same thing with the carrots, just glued the top one on top of the bottom one, and the same thing with the eggs and the hearts. But like I said, you could definitely leave these separate if you wanted to. My ideas always evolve as I'm crafting, so I decided to take this black Sharpie marker, and it is a fine tip, and I'm just doing some dots all the way around that green bunny at the bottom, and that just adds a little bit more whimsical character to it. Before I glued all of the pieces onto the bunny, I did add some speckling just with some white paint. And you can see that I painted the egg, the top part of the egg anyway, in a nice green color. I had done a little bit of a design, but I didn't like how it turned out. Now I'm going to add some Spanish moss and some greenery and florals. I'll add a couple of little blocks to the back of the rabbit so it can stand up on its own. And this project is done. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you decided to click on my video. If you like what you see so far, I'd love it if you could click that red button and subscribe to my channel. For this project, I'm starting out painting this wooden board. It was a lid from a box. It was already painted gray once. I'm going to just go over it with one really good coat of chalk paint. Using one of these Dollar Tree truck cutouts, I'm going to just apply some Mod Podge and then I'm going to add this plaid paper. I've kind of been into the plaids this year for some reason and I really love all of these pastel shades. I think they're perfect for spring and Easter. I'll add some more Mod Podge to the other part of the truck and then when I add the paper this time I'm just going to overlap it a little bit so it has the same type of pattern as in the original sheet. Then you don't notice the seam so much. I really like using this brayer tool to make sure that the paper is really stuck down and has attached itself to the Mod Podge. It's a really great tool to have in your arsenal. If you don't have one, I think I've got this one linked down in my description box. 
using my craft knife, I'm just going to cut off the excess paper and a little bit around where some of the areas are like inside the window and in between all of those little slats, just to make it easier to remove the paper. Here I had mistakenly glued the paper onto the wheels. So I'm just kind of freehanding around circle edge and then I'll be painting that black afterwards. So I'm just going to be very careful and peel off the paper and then just using my little emery board, I'll sand it down and try and get it as smooth as possible. I really like using a rough emery board to sand down edges like this. It just gives me more control and it's easier for me to hang on to something like this than a small little piece of sandpaper. What I'm doing here is just getting off all the excess paper, but I'm also sanding a little bit of the color off so you see a little bit of a white edge. And I just think this makes it look really cute. Taking a small brush and some black paint, I'm going to give the wheels one good coat and I am going to just make sure that the shape of my wheels up where the paper is matches the other side. So I want both of the wheels to look exactly the same. So on this one, I did have to go a little bit on top of the paper. I decided to keep these little wood pieces on the pickup truck brown and I'm going to just take some of my antiquing wax and go over it with a small brush. It doesn't have to be perfect because I want it to be sort of rustic looking anyway, but I'll get as much coverage as I can. I've got this really pretty font cut out in wood that says spring. This is something that I did on my laser machine and this will also be available on my Etsy shop. This wood cutout is part of this six word kit that says happy Easter. It says spring and Easter, you have blessings and you have hello. And they're in different fonts. So you can definitely switch things around. You can do happy Easter or happy spring. You can do hello spring or hello Easter. You can change it to Easter blessings. So you've got a lot of different options to use all six of these words. And again, this will be available as a kit on my Etsy shop. I'm going to use the Aileen's Clear Gel Tacky Glue again. I like using this for these small words because they're on flat on your project. Sometimes hot glue gives you a little bit of a raised edge and sometimes the hot glue oozes out and then you've got some cleanup to do. So with this, it dries clear and you don't even see it. So now the whiteboard is dry and I'll take some hot glue and put a generous amount on the back of the truck and then glue it right onto the whiteboard. And I'm going to keep it a little bit farther down towards the bottom. I just love the combination of that pastel plaid with the dark antique wax and the black wheels. Everything is just popping off of each other. Now I've got a whole bunch of little sprigs of greenery and lavender and some yellow, and I'm just going to keep filling in the little back of the truck until I get it nice and full. I want these flowers to look like they're peeking out of the wooden rails and they're overflowing in this little truck. And I love how this project turned out and I hope you like it too. For this DIY, I'm starting off with an old frame. It's seen better days. It's got some scuff marks on it and it has some distressing, has some holes in it. So I filled those with some wood filler. And now I'm going to give it just one coat of DIY chalk paint just to freshen it up. I purchased these wood half eggs from a local store and I really think they're so pretty. I just love the wood look of them. I'm going to take my antique wax again and I'm going to just give them a nice stain, applying the wax and then wiping off the excess. Mm -hmm. 
I really like a speckled egg look, but I'm not very good at the technique. So I decided to take the end of my paintbrush, dip it into a little bit of paint, dab off some of the excess, and then just go around on the egg, making different dots of different sizes. And I think this turned out a little bit prettier than it would have if I would have tried to do my speckling. If you have a foolproof technique on how to speckle things or just make little dots and sprays on your decor items, let me know down in the comments and I will try all of them in my next video because I really would love a fantastic way of how to do that without making a mess and without getting blobs and streaks and all sorts of things. So I'd really love your help with that. To cover up the word keys, I cut out this little piece of decorative vinyl. It's sort of a bluey green color and it has the wood texture to it. I just think it's really pretty. And what I'm going to do is just cut it to size and then literally just stick it right in the hole. Using some hot glue, I'm going to glue all three of the eggs right at the bottom of this little window or little frame part. I'm putting the white one in the center and then the pink one on one side and the blue on the other side. And I'm going to leave about an inch of space in between them. I just wanted them to be standing there in a row. I thought that would be really cute. I cut up some little bits of raffia and I'm going to use some hot glue to just glue it in between the eggs and also just a little bit in front so it looks like these eggs are actually in a little nest somewhere and I thought that was just a really sweet and fun way to emphasize that these are actually eggs. For a final look on this project, I'm going to put the words farm fresh in the same type of cutout letters that are stained with the antique wax. I didn't think you needed to see me do that again. This is a beautiful farmhouse style font. It's very similar to a Ray Dunn font. And this is also something that is now available on my Etsy shop. You can go ahead and order whatever word you want. You only have a limit of 12 letters. So you can do farm fresh, you can do gather, you can do happy Easter, whatever suits your decor and whatever you want to do with your DIY project. I glued these on with Aileen's clear tacky glue again and I think this project is super cute. I hope you enjoyed these rustic spring and Easter DIYs using wood cutouts and got some inspiration to DIY your own home decor. Don't forget to hit that like button, the notification bell, and that red subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.